The next cell organelle which we are going to discuss is a nucleus. Nucleus is the center of the cell. It is the controller of the cell. We have seen how to prepare a temporary amount of onion peel. There we discussed about staining the cells that is for a better vision, for a clarity. If you use a high power microscope, objective that is compound microscope, then you will be able to see the onion cells. That is you can see the cell membrane at least and at the same time you can find something else inside the cell that is the nucleus. So if you use certain kind of staining agents like iodine or you can use saffronin or methylene blue because certain colors they colored certain parts of the cell especially the nucleus you can find some dark bodies inside the cells. Of course you may not be able to see what is there inside this dark body clearly. You will find these dark bodies as dots that's all by using an objective compound microscope. If you use an electron microscope you will be able to see what is there inside the nucleus even. But till the level of compound microscope you are able to find out or locate the nucleus. Now let us see the structural features as well as the functional features of nucleus. First let us talk about its structure. Nucleus is a round dark body which is having two membranes, outer membrane as well as inner membrane. So two membranes are covering the nucleus. The membrane is called as the nuclear membrane, inner nuclear membrane, outer nuclear membrane. And what does this nucleus consists of? Nucleus consists of a thread like entangled mass of material called as chromatin nuclear material chromatin so what is this chromatin is it a ball of uh, thread what is this chromatin this chromatin is made up of two important materials called as dna and protein so what is this dna deoxy ribonucleic acid this is our genetic material which will decide the characteristic features of an organism which is very very important in determining the features of an organism that is the DNA its full form is deoxyribonucleic acid and protein these two together they form the chromatin chromatin is the entangled thread like mass which is found inside the nucleus and the nucleus is bound by two membranes the inner membrane and the outer membrane together called as nuclear membrane and of course the nucleus contains one more dark body called as a nucleolus now what is this chromatin we studied in the lesson of cell division mitosis and meiosis we studied about chromatids then what is the relation between this chromatin and chromatids? When a cell is not dividing, it is not in the stage of division. In such cases, you find the genetic material as chromatin, the mass of entangled thread like material chromatin. But when the cell is about to divide, when the cell is ready to cell division or when a cell is in the phase of cell division, you find the chromatin in the form of chromosomes. rod like structures chromosomes the chromatin it becomes two chromosomes that is during the process of cell division so whether it is a chromosome or a chromatin it consists of these things like dna and protein dna is the genetic material it will consist of all the information about various features of your body so what is this DNA is composed of? What is the fundamental unit of DNA? Genes. Genes are the fundamental units. Fundamental units of DNA. So genes, the composition of these genes, they make the DNA. Just imagine the DNA is a ladder. 
so all these parts of the ladder are genes our genes they pile up attach it to one another they make a long helical thread like structure called as dna so this is the structural part of the nucleus then what is the function of the nucleus what is the function functions control second thing coordinate the cell consists of various organelles it organelles it consists of mitochondria it consists of uh, lysosomes golgi bodies and different kind of things so these things they have to do different tasks but they don't do the tasks aimless that means unnecessarily the cell organelles do not prepare anything if a cell requires something if your body requires something the cell will prepare the material but who will give the instruction to the cell organelle to prepare that material how much material has to be prepared produced so that is decided by the nucleus so some oil has to be produced on your skin the skin cells the oil is produced by the oil glands the oil gland consists of cell the cell consists of cell organelle which will prepare the oil but the cell organelle how it will know when to produce the oil how much oil has to be produced it is based on the instruction given by the nucleus of course sometimes the nucleus it gets the information from other cells so the nuclear membrane will be having some pores for the exchange of information from the nucleus to the cell organelles so the information is carried from nucleus to the cell organelles parts of this cell there is some communication so this way the nucleus it will control the other organelles it will coordinate for example if the material required is produced in excess quantity it will initiate a feedback mechanism convert the excess material to some other material store it somewhere in this way the coordination and control of the cell is achieved by the nucleus and moreover nucleus plays a very important role in cell division mitosis meiosis when the cell division takes place the chromosomes they are divided in a specific manner in case of a mitosis in case of a meiosis so by that the genetic material is transferred to the newly formed cells in a proportionate way proper way not missing the genes so by that the abnormalities may arise so that is not happened which is achieved by the nucleus so it take it plays a very important role in cell division and at the same time it controls the activities or functions within the cell it control all the other cell organelles and other cell activities so what we are discussing about all about the multicellular organisms multicellular organisms they have a well defined nucleus in their cells in certain unicellular organisms in not all unicellular organisms i mean in certain unicellular organisms like bacteria they have they do not have a specific nucleus unicellular organism like amoeba it has got a specific nucleus its nucleus is clear distinct the nucleus is covered by nuclear membrane and it is having the similar nucleus as what we have but certain unicellular organisms like bacteria they do not have a specific nucleus then how do they achieve their cellular functions carried out if this is the bacteria then how the control of the other organelles takes place and how the division of the cell takes place so there they find the nuclear material is grouped at some lump some mass without having a proper nuclear membrane so without having a proper nuclear membrane the nuclear material is gathered with some proteins you call it as nucleoid not nucleus you cannot call it as nucleus but you call it as nucleoid which is found in primitive organisms certain organisms which do not have a nucleus are called as prokaryotes prokaryotes bacteria the organisms that do not have a specific or a distinct nucleus but they have nuclear material directly in the cytoplasm you call them as prokaryotes the organisms that have a distinct nucleus with a double layered nuclear membrane you call them as eukaryotes eukaryotes so prokaryotes and eukaryotes is the division of organisms based upon the presence of distinct nucleus in their cells if you like this video please give a thumbs up
प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू अवर चैनल टू गेट मोर वीडियोस ऑन सीबीएसई सिलेबस